Hello, Los Angeles. Happy New Year. Good evening. Uh, so good afternoon. <laughs> this is DJ Namdi. We're live from the Amazon Fella. Um, for us, 46. I'd like to thank uh, everybody at KPFK for making uh, this happen for us, 426. We're right here at the Amazon. And in the background, you can hear the music. And uh, people are all inside taking on the first set. Today is all about the music. Today is about the music of a great man, a true Pan Africanist, human rights activist, multi instrumentalist, a composer, Fela Anikulako Kuti. We chat with Sandra Isidore, Queen of Afrobeats, Sa Ngauja, who plays Fela, and also Melanie Marshall. Who played Fumilaya Ransom Kuti, Paulette Ivory, who also played Queen of uh, Afrobeat Sandra Isidore. My name is Namde with all the crew here at the Amazon Theater. Again, we say Ekuadun in Yoruba, Happy New Year. We're about to launch into uh, a chat with uh, the Queen of Afrobeat and uh, Sa Ngauja. For those I don't know, Sa's uh, father is from Sierra Leone, his mother from Los Angeles. Um, we we'll get to hear from uh, Sa and also the Queen of Afrobeat. Right about now, we roll into chatting with uh, Sandra Isidore, Queen of Afrobeat, with uh, Sa Ngauja. playing fella in Los Angeles oh. well it's um it's it's really good you know it's uh I guess I can feel the bones of of uh, of the history that you and fella carved out here like uh, in in the air so. <laughs> yeah, you know we did we did a lot here in LA I mean I mean it was a lot of fun um, in LA with fella yeah you know back in the day I mean for me the experience that I had with Fella here in this city, mm. um, for a long time, it, it took me to get over that. Wow, you know, yeah. no, 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 because it was very special. A lot of special things were happening for me at that time. Um, I mean, to me, it was like meeting my first real African. Even though I had met other African students, yeah. I had never met anyone like Fella. Mm. And in meeting Fela, we shared and did a lot of, you know, exchanging and learning from each other. Mm -hmm. You know, me more about African culture and him about the movement that was happening here in Los Angeles at that time. Well, it was happening across mm -hmm. America, but specifically um, Los Angeles, you know, and it was about making change. And it's still about making change. And today, when I see what's going on, it's scary to me. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. But in terms of in terms of what? Uh... Well, you know, the message in this musical is relevant to what is happening in the world today. Mm. So, for us to have had that vision, what forty years ago? Mm. Even though I'm twenty nine <laughs> 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 and holding, <laughs> you know. That message then has, today, I mean, it's like the wake up. Mm. And if we don't wake up soon, I see us headed for self-destruction. Mm. You know, um, there are seven deadly sins, mm. and greed is one of them. And at this time, I see greed in so many places. And Greed is a destructive thing. Mm. And when it gets to the point where you have, uh, I'm just using a, like a parable or something. Mm. Um, when you have 10 people that are living very successful mm. and 100 that are not, mm. what do you think is going to happen when that 100, you know, when their numbers continue to grow and the 10 stay mm. the 10 and those over there in the 100 numbers they're hungry mm. they're, they, they don't have housing mm. 
they don't have proper medical. What do you think is going to happen? Mm. So I think the musical is relevant. Uh, mm. And then you, I might add, uh, do an excellent job in portraying Fela. Because when they said they were doing this musical before I saw it or knew anything about it, I was like, it can't be done. Mm. It can't be done. Can't nobody play Fela. Well, you broke that. Okay, you broke that mold, and it was like when I looked up on stage, when I saw your body movements, your hands, your mannerisms, it was like fella came to life. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so Thanks. I want to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Sandra. So <laughs> most people want to know the physical part because I mean, it's a high energy show, and you have to be in shape to really mm. to do this show daily. Yeah, yes, yeah, it, it takes a lot of work. Um, From yeah. the female point of view, <laughs> haven't you seen that six pack? <laughs> <laughs> that lovely yeah. six pack. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it's, uh, yeah, every day I have to train, you know, before the show, I'm running, uh, going to the gym, and uh, then uh, I also, well, eating proper foods and rest and taking my vitamins and minerals yeah, all of those things are what allows me to do it yeah you know I might add that you know fella had a very fit body as well you know mm -hmm. fella was a very fit man and it wasn't because he exercised well mm -hmm. Maybe it was different, you know, 27 wise. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he had, yeah, he had lots of exercise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure. But I mean, this was also a part of it, too, because I mean, you watch tapes, you know, Fela is fit, you know, and uh, well, well, that was also a part of uh, my motivation to do it. But then, as we were making the show, uh, the demands. Um, uh, Bill placed on the show, and the demands that I also placed on myself, they made it a situation. It made it a situation where, uh, well, it required a lot of work, a lot of training. Yeah. What does it mean coming to Los Angeles to do this show? Because for everybody, it started right here in Los Angeles. Yeah, it's um, well, it's 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 really fascinating, you know, because. I guess in a way this is kind of putting a cap on, um, I don't even know if it's really a cap, but it's really, it's another very important marker in, uh, I think, in the story of the, the life of this show. I know definitely as uh, being a part of uh, the team uh, that created the show, like coming here um, after going to Lagos now also, it's, uh, well, it's very special, you know, and yeah, to be here with Sandra and to... Um, I guess feel the feel the feel the path, you know, Fela's journey. Well, I can say this: he has definitely followed the path. You know, um, as you know, the musical started in New York, and um, when Fela first came to the U.S., that was his first stop, New mm. York. Okay, and then they had, when I say they, I'm speaking of the cast and the crew, had the opportunity to go back to Africa, Nigeria to be mm -hmm. specific, yeah. pick up the vibe and energy there, then come back and now they're here in Los Angeles. So I think they've done, you know, a wonderful job in picking up all the energy in all the different places. Mm. Plus you've done Europe too, yes? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, it's true. Yes, yeah, England, Amsterdam. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's really great, man. It's, it's very special. Talk about that show in uh, the shrine because that must have touched you too. I mean, playing fella at the shrine in Lagos. Yeah, that was that was really crazy. Man. It was magical. You know, it, it's. Um, I mean, I've never had an experience like that before. I mean, the whole time in uh, the whole time we were in Nigeria, you know, with the show was something other than what I've really ever um, touched uh, in my working life. But uh, of course, you know, what was really uh, kind of uh, fascinating was that uh, in this show, what we are asking people to do is to walk into a theater and suspend their reality and believe that they are in the shrine in Lagos in the 70s. 
And this is the idea. This is what we're doing. This is what we're trying to get people to journey with us. Uh, this is the ride we want them to take with us. Now, we're doing this same show in the shrine. The best way that I've ever been able to describe it, I think it's like standing in between two giant mirrors that are both facing each other. It was crazy, man. Wow, you know what? I never thought of it like that because, you know, I didn't see it in the Nigeria. I was chicken little. I wasn't going during <laughs> the election. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was kind of heavy duty. Yeah, yeah. And I know how, when Fella was alive, how the people were that were in power, how they felt about him. Mm. So I wasn't taking any unnecessary chances. And I, I was telling Steve, I thought he was crazy. Yeah. But anyway, it all turned out and it was beautiful and everything. But for you to bring that perspective, mm. you know, the mirror. Yeah, uh, because that must have been... Wow, surreal, huh? Totally, man. Totally. I mean, even like, even to things as simple as like, you know, where we place our shrine on the stage. Right. In the shrine, Fela Shrine is just past our shrine <laughs> in the space itself, you right, know? Right. Like, when, when I was walking on with the guys, you know, we always come and we stop in front of the shrine. Mm. And this time when we came in, first we stopped in Fela Shrine. Yes. Then we come to our own shrine on the stage. I mean, it was mad, man. Wow. It was crazy. That was deep. Uh, you know, I never thought, I never thought about, you know, you as an actor um, having to be put in a situation like that. That was deep. It was mad. Yeah. It was magical, too. I mean, it was really, I've never experienced anything like that. You know, um, especially when you're talking about you were during, doing the shrine, in the real shrine. Yeah. Whereas here in America, when uh, when I saw it off Broadway, um, and I was so this can't be done, you know, I was so against it. And then um, after seeing it, and when I walked in, even though it was a theater, I said, "Wow, this is really like the Shrine," you know. <laughs> and then when the the queens came in. And their mannerisms, and it was so, you know, it was up close and personal. I was able to see their facial, and I said, wow, this is really like the Queen. Then you came on. Because, see, now I'm the skeptic, and I'm no nobody. Nah, mm -mm. You came on. And once you came on and you started acting, you started speaking, it was like fella being transformed right there in front of my eyes. So I started crying and I couldn't stop. Mm. <laughs> it's amazing that the life this show has taken and the um, response that it's uh, been receiving all over the world. I mean, it's, you know, sometimes people ask me, like, why do you think the show is uh, so well received, you know? And there are a number of reasons why that, you know, may be, but at the, at the core of it, you know, there is Fela, and there is his music, you know, and, well, he, he called himself Anikolapo. So, we can hear his music all over the world and find people who, well, the music is timeless, in a way, you know, and uh, I, I think it will continue to rock people on dance floors and, uh, and provoke, uh, provoke ideas in people for, for as long as there's an apparatus for people to hear it, you know. So we always wonder.